Good afternoon. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kendra Luebuka. I'm an artist. I'm an architect. But on this channel, we talk about watercolor art. But today, I want to talk about drawing. So, so far in my very short YouTube career, all I've done is put up watercolor video logs. This is a way for me to start producing more watercolor, to explore it more and to share it out. And that's been very fun. But Monday was a no school day. And as such, I put together a class for my teenage twin boys so that we could work on their drawing skills. I've been doing this all along with them, but I thought if I'm gonna to put together a little drawing class for my boys, I might as well make some videos about it, put up a series, that way I get practice making videos and maybe you'll get something out of it as well. So today I'm going to cover three things. First, I'm gonna stand on my soapbox for a minute and I'm going to rail against the injustice of the current state of education that favors the left side of the brain and totally neglects the right side. Point two, there is a big secret that should never be a secret about how to draw. I'm gonna draw directly from Betty Edwards' foundational 1979 book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. I suggest you buy this book. I suggest you go to the link that I have in the description. That way you're giving me a little bit of a commission and getting a great book at the same time. More on that later. I'm gonna use this book because it has brain science in it about how you need to shift from left brain thinking to right brain thinking in order to see properly and in order to draw. So I'm gonna discuss that as point number two. Point number three, I'm gonna show the first two exercises that show how to do that left right shift that are directly from her book. And I also have a twist. She's shown it one way. I'm going to use new technology to make it a little more fun. And this is the project that I did with my twins on Monday. I'll show you what their results were, what my results were, because of course I did the drawing as well. And that's it. So those three points, let's get into it. All right, now we're getting into it. Point number one, drawing is a skill. It is not a talent, a skill, just like riding a bicycle or learning how to cook. When someone says to me that they just don't have the talent for drawing, I'm compelled to call bullshit. That's just a cop out for not wanting to try. If that's you, and perhaps you're starting to feel annoyed and ready to click away to another video, let me guess at your comeback. You might say, but I've tried so many times. I've taken workshops and I've tried and I follow tutorials and I just don't get it. To you, I will say what my junior high school band teacher said to us. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. If you practice it the wrong way, you will do it perfectly wrong. That's Mr. Jacobus. I really liked him. <laughs> so I can only conclude that you've missed one major aspect to learning how to draw and that's not your fault. Have you noticed that in every elementary school everywhere, that the hallways are lined with art is such a fire hazard. They're lined with art, with beautiful compositions, imaginative colors, self-portraits. And then you go to middle school and the hallways are lined with lockers. What happens? We drop art off right at the crucial moment when there's a transition in our brains that is going to take us to the next step of our drawing career and we drop drawing as a, 
a course that's uh, required in middle school. You can take it as an elective, but it's not required like language arts and math and history are required. This is a crime. This is me on my soapbox. This is really unfortunate because I'll tell you what, in my work as an architect, I had to cross back and forth between my left brain and right brain daily. I mean, minute by minute. That's how creative ideas get generated. You have to utilize both sides, both hemispheres of your brain in order to be able to come up with new and creative ideas. And I had to use drawing. I had to use my hand in order to start to move my brain. And so it's critical. It's critical to learn how to think this way in order to have creative ideas, but it also does something for your blood pressure. It does something for your sense of self. It helps you to find out things about yourself. It's a very crucial skill, and it's really unfortunate that is not recognized in school because it just needs one more leap, maybe two more years of education when you are old enough to understand that you have two hemispheres in your brain and that you need to be able to utilize both sides and that it's just a different way of looking when you move into your right brained side. It's just a different way of looking and you can feel your brain moving when you get used to it. And that brings me to point number two. Point number two, the secret that should never be a secret. We don't draw with our hands. We draw with our eyes. Yes, I use my hand to hold the paintbrush. I don't use my eye. But if I had lost the use of my right hand, because I'm right-handed, I would be able to eventually draw with my left hand because it's about how I see the world when I turn on my right side of my brain and look at something that makes all the difference. So how did I find out about this? I read Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Actually, she has a number of books and I've read two or three of them. But this is her first and foundational book. It's been updated many times. It's now in the 2012 version, which looks really compelling. I'm almost, I'm almost compelled to buy the new version and just chuck this old one, give it away in my lending library. If you go to my link down in the description and you click on it, it should cost about $19 to buy this book. If you do it from my link, Amazon will send me a like 80 cents or something like that. And I would appreciate that just because it's a lot of fun to know that somebody got influenced by something that I've shared and you will really appreciate this book. If you're learning how to draw, this is the crucial link to success. So here's the Cliff Notes version of what Dr. Edwards says about left brain and right brain and why understanding the left-right shift impacts your ability to see properly so that you can draw realistically. In a nutshell, you may already know that the right side of your, of your body is controlled by the left side of your brain and the left side of your body is controlled by the right side of your brain. Now, the left side is good at linear thinking type tasks, speech, language, reading, math, logic, and keeping time. Those are all happening over here on the left side, except there's a few people apparently who learn how to read with the right side. I have a suspicion that there may be some connection to dyslexia and right-brained reading because I have one of my sons has a mild dyslexia and part of it is that he sees words as a shape. So he will look at a word and he will, he will say, well, it has this shape and it starts with an SH. And so then he will guess at the word based on the first two letters and the shape of the word. Isn't that fascinating? Anyway. That's not science, that's just me postulating what could be happening. Anyway, the right side of the brain, this one over here, is good at drawing 
intuition, reading body language, creative thinking, and seeing patterns. There's a thick nerve cable that connects both of the sides to each other with millions of fibers, and I think it's pronounced the corpus callosum. It's in Latin, Latin words, corpus callosum. That's what you're going to be utilizing in order to shift from your left brain to your right brain when you try these exercises with me. So anyway, you have these two brains, the left brain and the right brain, and they perceive the world in different ways. So for instance, right now, if you're both listening and watching me, you are hearing my words through your left side of your brain. And when you're looking at me, your right brain is trying to decide, is this person authentic? Should I trust her? And your right brain is making that calculation. And then the two of them come together and decide if the words that are spoken and the body language match up. As an aside, I don't know if you've done this, but since the pandemic has started, I've noticed that when we watch the news, we often watch PBS NewsHour, for instance, I get very distracted when I'm watching the correspondents or other people that they're interviewing when they're speaking from home. Because I'm there looking at all their decor and trying to make some kind of a judgment about the person based on what I see around them. Because I'm getting all this extra information that you don't get when the person's in the studio. So for instance, Maybe you're the same if you watch the same news program. I love Lisa Desjardins. I love listening to the words she says. I love watching her interviews. I think she's smart as a whip and very engaging. But I like her even more because her cat sleeps on the couch behind her when she's talking from home. It sounds crazy, I know. Anyway, I'm on a digression. Where was I? Oh, yes. The left brain perceives things differently from the right brain. And your left brain is not good at drawing, but your right brain is. So what we need to do in order to get you going from that left brain that's dominant to the right brain that can draw, is you gotta trick the left brain into shutting up and going to sleep so the right brain will have a chance. So that's what these exercises, that are my point three, that's what they're designed to do. And they're the same exercises that Betty Edward has put in her book, except I'm going to use a little bit of new technology in order to make it a bit more fun. It was a bit more fun for us to do it with the new technology and our own images. Finally, the drawing part of this video about drawing. If you turn to page 46 in your copy of Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, you should see this diagram that I've just put up on the screen. This is the first project in the book that is designed to make you experience the left-right shift. The author, Betty Edwards, calls this project Base Faces. You can see right off that I didn't follow the directions very carefully because I started off drawing the right side of this profile, even though I am right-handed. In the next few sketches, I get it right. The idea here is to draw one side of a face profile and then mirror that line on the opposite side to form a vase shape. If you pay attention, you will feel your left brain giving up on the activity and allowing your right brain to draw. Can you tell who I was drawing here? It's a funny face. If you are a fan of Lord of the Rings, I think you might start to recognize this person. Well, not a person, actually. A dwarf. I drew the rest of it for your benefit. That's not actually part of the project. My twist on this exercise is to draw characters from movies or cartoons that you or your student will recognize. I think there's more of a delight in working on a profile that's different from the one that is shown in the book. So now, who do you think this is? This one makes a great vase, by the way. I love how that shape goes together. And now I draw the rest of it. 
from the same movie. <laughs> and if you watch my shorts, my YouTube shorts, you will have seen this already. While you watch me draw the next series of characters, there's a really interesting sidebar story on page 48, so I'm going to read it to you now. Thomas Gladwin, an anthropologist, contrasted the ways that a European and a native Truckees sailor navigated small boats between tiny islands in the vast Pacific Island, I mean Pacific Ocean. Before setting sail, the European begins with a plan that can be written in terms of directions, degrees of longitude and latitude, estimated time of arrival at separate points on the journey. Once the plan is conceived and completed, the sailor has only to carry out each step consecutively, one after another, to be assured of arriving on time at the planned destination. The sailor uses all available tools, such as a compass, a sextant, a map, etc., and if asked, can describe exactly how he got where he was going. The European navigator uses the left hemisphere mode. In contrast, the native Truckee sailor starts his voyage by imaging the position of his destination relative to the position of other islands. As he sails along, he constantly adjusts his direction according to his awareness of his position thus far. His decisions are improvised continually by checking relative positions of landmarks, sun, wind direction, etc. He navigates with reference to where he started, where he is going, and the space between his destination and the point where he is at the moment. If asked how he navigates so well without instruments or a written plan, he cannot possibly put it into words. This is not because the truckees are unaccustomed to describing things in words, but rather because the process is too complex and fluid to be put into words. The truckees navigator uses the right hemisphere mode. And that's a little quote by J.A. Paradis and M.J. Hepburn in a book, I believe, called The Split Brain and the Culture Cognition Paradox. It might be an article, it might be a book. Anyway, back to looking at my film. Here you can see me sketching, obviously, Winnie the Pooh characters. And here's the last one. I found it very um, interesting to, to draw characters in profile. Although I have to say that my rabbit on the right side is a hot mess. That was somehow hard for me to, to get into. I don't know if I was distracted or, <laughs> or what was going on. But anyway, that happens at times. All right, we're coming up on the next exercise. And the next exercise is called Upside Down Drawing. For this project, you could use the line drawing on page 52 of the book. It's Pablo Picasso's portrait of Igor Stravinsky. In my family, we've all done that one numerous times. So this time, I decided to mine some old photos from my great aunt Tyne's photo album. The great thing about using black and white photos is that you can easily see the full range of values. This comes in for me mostly when I'm painting. These particular photos have a great sense of composition. Whomever was behind the camera had such a good eye. And I think that my great aunt was primed for things like Instagram. She would have been an influencer for sure if it had been around in her day. <laughs> After choosing my favorite photographs, I took digital images of them. In just a minute, we'll see the collection of my favorite, my favorites from my Aunt Tyne's collection. Here we are. Fabulous composition. Lots of interesting ways to look at people. So there's the pictures. And then I used this app called Outline Photo to Sketch Editor. 
it's free and it has some in-app purchases which I didn't use. I just used the most basic feature of importing my photo and turning it into a line drawing. There's the line drawing. Then I printed it out at full size on an 11 or 8.5 by 11 page on my printer. The photos I chose were really challenging subjects. Another option that I might try to make it challenging but a little less so would be to pick an artist like Vermeer. The girl with the pearl earring up on the screen now would be a nice choice. Young woman with a water jug is a little more complex and it would also be a nice choice for this exercise. Just find the photo on Google and make your life easier by using the outline app to turn it into a black and white drawing. Gauguin has a strong linear quality to many of his works. By that I mean there's a strong outline around his subjects that would work nicely for this exercise. This painting called Reverie would be nice to try, as would this one called Portrait of a Woman. The reason why the upside down drawing works in helping you to shift from left brain thinking to right brain thinking is because your left brain has a hard time naming what it is seeing, like this is an eye, this is a nose, this is an ear, and so it cannot draw the symbol for those pieces. Your right brain is therefore left to the task, and it is well suited to this job. It sees curvy lines, circles, angles, and other shapes. It is relational, just like the trapeze navigator. It places the lines in relation to each other without naming what is being drawn. Dr. Edwards recommends that you find a quiet place where you will not be interrupted for 30 or 40 minutes. She says you can play music if you like, and that sounds nice. When we did this on Monday, we played an audiobook, which turned out to be a mistake. I kept finding myself missing big chunks of the story because I was fully in right brain mode. Next time we try this, I think we'll play music instead. You're not supposed to peek and look at the drawing right side up until you finish. I know, it's hard. The last thing I'm going to show you today are our final results of this upside down drawing project. In the next video in this series, I'll talk about chapter five, which is all about your history as an artist. So it's more brain science. The project will be blind contour drawing. That's where you draw something without looking at the paper. All right, and that brings us right to the finished works and the very last bit of today's video. Here we go, here's the one that I worked on. You can see the photo at the left, the line drawing from outline on the middle and my drawing at the right. Next up, we're going to see one of my twins is very ambitious project of working on this little picture of my late uncle on his bicycle. It's um, impressive because he got the shapes. And finally, my other twin did another very ambitious project of doing a picture of my mother as a little girl. Again, he picked a challenging subject, but he pulled it off beautifully. I want to thank you for watching all the way until the end. And if you've made it this far, please hit subscribe because I know you're loving it and you would love to see the next video. See you again soon. Bye.